we now return to feeding Paul Bunyan. Cooking Paul's breakfast took a small army. Every morning he'd demand 10 pallets of fried goose eggs, 27 feet of pork sausage links, and a stack of pancakes taller than a clock tower. For dessert, he'd smoke tobacco out of a steam locomotive. The cooking range was so long that they strapped two large hams to my feet and I ran up and down a half a mile to grease up that black glistening stovetop. I was in constant fear for my life. Elba, the town drunk, 1894. <gasps> I have a rather rare artifact here. It's actually a frilly toothpick from one of Paul's uh, turkey clubs. Priceless. These big meals didn't come without controversy. In 1896, a child drowned in one of Paul's waffles. I would like to offer my condolences to the victim's family. At least your son died doing what he loved, swimming in a giant pool of maple syrup. This tragedy sparked outrage and caused the nation to question the great financial burden that cooking Paul's meals put on the country. Paul Bunyan, tall as the pines, our pockets empty, but you're doing just fine. Mothers all over this great land are struggling to put meals on our tables, while at the same time being taxed into oblivion so that a giant, terrifying lumberjack can eat up all the breakfast foods. His name serves him right. He is a great bunion upon society. Susan B. Anthony, 1899. Not everyone shared the same opinion. In December of 1901, Paul was invited by the president to put a star atop the White House Christmas tree. Mr. Bunyan can clear an entire forest with one swing of his axe. His backbone is our backbone. Oh, God, could you just imagine him taking you in those strong arms? Uh, I'm sorry. What are we talking about? Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bunyan, for giving us all wood. Over the next 60 years, Paul would be responsible for almost one-third of the nation's lumber, and mostly all of its roadside gas station gimmicks. When we come back, Paul loses his partner, Babe the Big Blue Ox, and his tail is used to feed 6,000 Jamaicans. Oh, Paul Bunyan, tall as a pine, eating more than a field of corn at a time. His size matched the tales, the legend by the mile. We're working just to keep up, and he's eating with style. 